Welcome to Yolo, Texas, and this is our team of traveling Texans. <laughs> Ride shotgun with us as we visit breathtaking views. I can't put it towards how amazing this view is. Check out heart racing attractions. <laughs> and taste mouth-watering foods that only this great state has to offer. So can we dig in? My wife is usually the happiest person ever right now. Why you ask? Well, to simply put it, you only live once, Texas. Hey y'all, welcome to Yellow Texas, your favorite stopping point on your trek across the Lone Star State. I'm your host, Daisy, and I don't know about y'all, but I like to stay cool during these brutal summer months. So in this episode, we're getting those summer bods tight, we're cooling off by the river and staying hydrated all in the central Texas region. But first up, ducked away between Austin and San Antonio is what I like to think of as the flowing heart of Texas. That's right, we're talking about floating down the San Marcos River. We'll cool off in the water, spot some wildlife on a one-of-a-kind glass bottom boat, and of course, grab some grub with an ice cold brew. So buckle up because Ariel's taking you to San Marcos, Texas. This is San Marcos, or as some like to call it, San Marvelous. And let me tell you that it is one of the hidden gems of the Central Texas region. If you remember, we visited the city a few episodes back and explored the local art scene. But this time around, we're going to take you under, over, and through for the complete San Marcos River experience. First up, the Meadow Center. If you're curious what critters lurk underneath the water, the Meadow Center Glass Bottom Boat Tour may be the experience for you. This unique trip gives an underwater perspective of the beautiful Spring Lake. The boat maneuvers through bubbling springs, historical landmarks, and more, and we're about to experience it all. Today, I'm meeting with Anna Huff, the communications manager here at the Meadow Center. We're a water research and education center. Uh, we were founded in 2002, and our mission is to inspire research and leadership that ensures clean water for the environment and all of humanity. So when someone comes here, what can we do? I mean, it's so beautiful out here. Yeah, so Spring Lake is really unique. It's the headwaters of the San Marcos River. And it's actually the second largest cluster of natural springs in Texas. So these springs bubble up straight from the Edwards Aquifer, so it's a constant 72 degrees year-round. And there's a lot of ways that the public can interact and explore Spring Lake with us. We have glass bottom boat tours, guided wetlands tours, a discovery hall that has hands-on activities and an endangered species exhibit. And we just launched a snorkel program. Wow. Yeah. And there's a turtle. Yeah. Sorry, I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> so, now that we've seen a turtle, what other <laughs> animals can we see? We have spotted gars, Guadalupe bass, and we also have eight threatened and endangered species that live here at Spring Lake. And at night, you can even see some American eels. I got certified for scuba diving here. Yes. So you also have a really cool program for scuba divers. We do. So certified scuba divers can take this dive authorization course here at Spring Lake. And after they complete it, they become part of our Aqua Corps, which is our volunteer dive team. And they can come out here at any time, enjoy dives in this beautiful water, but also help us maintain the habitat. Now you can't get on a boat without a captain. That's when I met Sam, captain and longtime member of the Meadow Center. Um, we can see an abundance of springs and there'll be fish and turtles and stuff out. I'll take us by the shore too, where we can see some birds and other wildlife. With the Meadow Center open seven days a week, visitors can experience over 200 springs continuously bubbling to form Spring Lake. And with captains on hand, guests can also learn about the history of the excursion. So these tours were started in the 1940s by father and son A.B. and Paul Rogers, who used to own this property here in San Marcos. And you know, people traveling more than ever back then, uh, they turned it into a roadside attraction. And people have basically been coming here ever since. I could be a turtle. As they just come out to sunbathe. With the glass bottom boat tour coming to a close, our time at the Meadow Center isn't over just yet. 
So this is our floating wetlands boardwalk. Uh, it can basically rise and lower with the water level, but out here in the springtime, you could expect to see fish coming up to lay their eggs. Water birds out here hunting for the fish. There's just uh, no telling what all you'll see. And no trip to the Meadow Center is complete without stopping into Discovery Hall to see with your own eyes the Texas blind salamander. This is like you're going underground into the aquifer, the habitat of the blind salamander. And he's right here. So that's what they look like. That's right, yeah. They are totally adapted for living in the darkness of the aquifer. They don't have eyes. They sense their whole world around them using vibration and smell. So these are actually the top predators in the aquifer. Here around San Marcos, these guys are sort of the ones that keep the population, you think perhaps, of blind water bugs that live in the aquifer in check. They're like the top predator. Very cool. I think he's super excited. Yeah, he must he's hear like us talking. Looking at it. Yeah. Looking at it. Well, I mean, he has no eyes, so he can't look at us. <laughs> right. But, he's not um, looking. Yeah. <laughs> he senses that we're here. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now that we've explored underwater, let's go even deeper and see what underground San Marcos looks like. Welcome to Wonderworld Park, a truly unique Texas experience that redefines the definition of an American roadside attraction. For 105 years, visitors have enjoyed touring the Wonder Cave. To show us around, we met up with owner and all-around cavern expert, Kristen Williams. Well, we are the first show cave in Texas. We've been operating for over 115 years. Families have been coming here to experience all the things that we have to offer, which is the unique walk through the cave. It's an earthquake form cave. We have an observation tower that oversees San Marcos and all the beautiful things it has to offer. And we also have a train ride through the wildlife park that you can feed animals throughout. It's a lot of fun for all ages. As of recent, we added a petting zoo area that's free to the public. So we want to invite you know, locals and just people that want to come out and experience Wonder World Park to come see our animals and care for them as we do. Perfect. So tell me a little bit about you and your connection to Wonder Park. So I'm the third generation. It's been a family owned business since 1950. Before we took over Wonder World Cave, it was actually owned by A.B. Rogers, which was the Meadows, once Ocarina Springs owner. So it's a, it is a connection between all the things St. Marcus has to offer. Well, I'm excited. Are you ready to show me the cave? Yes, let's do it. The entrance to the cave is conveniently located inside Wonder World Park's eclectic and historic gift shop. Before we get started in the cave, I want to get you all geared up. Okay. So here you are. Perfect. I'm ready. I be caving, right? You look I'd good. I be caving, yeah. All right, so we're here with Maddie, who's going to guide me on our cave tour, right? Yeah, so we're super excited, and it's right over here. We okay. can head down. Awesome, let's go. Stay right there. More from beautiful San Marvelous coming at you on Yolo, Texas. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas, where Ariel and our Yellow Texas crew are exploring the beautiful and lively San Marcos, Texas. So far, we experienced all that the Meadow Center has to offer and got the lowdown on Wonder World Park. Now it's time for us to beat Caven with our tour guide, Maddie. So this is the entrance. This is where our cave was discovered in 1893. They found steam rising from these rocks and they dug all the way down and they discovered the rest of our cave. Wow. Yeah, so we'll go check out what they found. Cool. So at what point does it stop being humid? <laughs> After this first room. It oh. gets so much cooler. It goes to 72 degrees. We're coming up to our dome room. So 35 million years ago, an earthquake actually split apart these two walls and created our cave. And some of these rocks actually fell in between our cave walls and they're called wedge stones and they hold our cave open. This is just so cool to be in here, and it does feel a lot better yes. than when we first walked in. There's no humidity <laughs> once you get cool. down here. It feels great. Now we're getting to the last room of the cave. This is our fossil room. What kind of fossils? So these are trace fossils. So they're burrows okay. of a clam from 65 million years ago. The layer that we're looking at was a petrified sea. So it's actually the ocean floor. We're kind of looking at it from the other side. Whoa. Mind blown right now. And even more mind-blowing is the 190-foot trip up the Stradivator to the top of the observation tower. 
So on this side is the Gulf Coastal Plains. So you can see it's super flat. It goes like that all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Love that, it's my side. Yes. And then on this side is the Texas Hill Country. So you can see we really can't even see over this first hill. Just rolling hills all the way that way. After we made our way back to solid ground, it was time to board the express train bound for the Texas Wildlife Petting Zoo and Mystery Mountain. So we're gonna go into the wildlife park here at Wonder World. Um, it's just behind Mystery Mountain over there. It's Texas's largest petting park. All right, so as far as feeding goes, the best way to do it is to just pop the bag open with one hand, put some food in your opposite hand, okay. and then just kind of wait for them to say hello. So here they come. I, I got you covered, bro. Delicious, hey. eh? Hello. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Oh god, I'm scared he's gonna take my hand. Yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? Here we go. Bro, you're like wasting half of it. Another messy eaters. I need to wash my hands ASAP. Wonderworld's petting park is truly a unique and unforgettable experience. Despite my experience with the emu, I really did love every minute of it. From one extreme underground to another extreme above ground and to all the friendly creatures in between, we had an absolute blast here at Wonderworld. But y'all, it's getting a little toasty, so are you ready for a dip? Of course, in San Marvelous, there's one thing that everyone has to do. I'm talking about tubing. In San Marcos, tubing is so popular, it's become synonymous with the city. It's a rite of passage amongst visitors and residents alike. Several different rivers, including the Guadalupe, Blanco, and of course, the San Marcos River, flow through the area. And joining us today is a duo that know a thing or two about Texas tubing. The Lions Club Tube Rental is the fundraising arm of the San Marcos Lions Club. 100% um, of our profits go to charity at the end of the year. It's beautiful out here. You have a wonderful, wonderful spot. And I get to go to work on the river every day. I know. You have one of the coolest jobs ever. I, I do. Yeah. I do. I love the community because it's halfway between Austin and San Antonio, but it's not Austin or San Antonio. What I am so proud of is the fact that the San Marcos River, the Lions Club, and the tube rental experience bring so many children out to enjoy nature in a fun way that even their parents are equally <laughs> excited about. And there's so many ways to get into the river. It's one of my favorite things to do is the people watching to see yeah. the different ways that people get into there too. Yes. When they're going to What's the most common way? The best way is to do it like this. Oh my god, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> In the heart of San Marcos resides a beer garden and brewery that will surely quench your thirst. Aqua Brew serves up delicious IPAs and mouthwatering entrees, all housed within their beautiful facility. We dined with Carlos Russo, the creator of this fun downtown location. I started in my basement. I was a home brewer for a number of years. And uh, as you can tell, it went beyond just curiosity. It's really the beer that I'm most passionate about. And you know, it's the heartbeat of Aqua Brew. Do you have any new beers that you're offering or featuring for the summer? The apricot and the swine dive appear to be, so far, the ones that are demanded the most. And okay. so if I were to suggest one for you, if you don't like hoppy beer, then it would be the apricot. Otherwise, if you do like hoppy beer, I would encourage you to try the uh, swine dive. All right, we've had an amazing time in San Marcos, and ending it at Aqua Group is the perfect touch to finish our day. So I'm going to enjoy my beer, and I'll see y'all later. To learn more about any and all the fabulous destinations we explore today, visit toursanmarcus.com. Don't go away, coming up, we're testing our strength and agility through an American Ninja Warrior obstacle course. That's next on Yellow Texas. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas. So if you've been keeping up with the show, you know that we are always up for any kind of challenge. So when we heard that there was an American Ninja Warrior gym, we immediately signed ourselves up. We're talking obstacle courses, warped walls, climbing and crawling, the whole shebang, it's all right there. So come with us as we make our way to Spring Branch, Texas and the one and only Power Park Fitness. Step into Power Park Fitness. Located on the outskirts of San Antonio in Spring Branch, Texas, plays a spacious fitness facility equipped to train even the toughest Spartans out there. 
First things first, meeting up with owner and American Ninja Warrior qualifier, David Yarder. So this is Power Park Fitness. We are an obstacle training facility where you get to test your will and your might against obstacles that you've seen on American Ninja Warrior or Tough Mudder or Spartan Race. So I'm gonna take you through the Green Mile, which is our outdoor obstacle course. It's 1.75 miles, it has 25 obstacles on it. And we're also gonna do a couple American Ninja Warrior obstacles that I think will help prepare you for what you'll see at Tough Mudder. All right, so we just finished the warm up. Woo. We're about to hit the warp wall. It's a very popular American Ninja Warrior obstacle. Uh, Tough Mudder will have a variation of it and your shoes are gonna be a little bit muddy so it could be fairly challenging. So we're gonna see if you can give it a go. You're on. So let's do this. All right. All right, so I'm gonna save my energy. We're gonna hit the course. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Green mile time. Oy. All right, so that's start, but that is finished, and there's a whole mile and a half and 25 obstacles in between. So wish me luck. Ready to get going. Woo. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Let's hit the green mile. All right, let's go. The Green Mile is actually a little over a mile's distance, loaded with 25 obstacles built to test human agility, speed, and strength through a new strategy of racing. There you go. You're doing great. Hands, core, legs. Second best core, part about this. Legs. You still have to hold yourself, too. There you go. Good. was amazing intense but amazing and fun definitely Aaron you have no idea how tough that obstacle course is for you to make it through all the obstacles that you did major props seriously thank you, thank you so much yeah. uh, guys if you want to switch up your workout routine really dig into something that will work every muscle in your body uh, power park fitness is the place to be and uh, thank you David so much I think I'm ready for the tough mutter thank you guys yeah YOLO YOLO <laughs> We are not done yet here on Yellow Texas. After the break, we sip on some of the best sake in the world that's made right here in Texas. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas. So in the Austin area alone, there are more than 25 amazing breweries, some of which we visited right here on this show. Well, we've never quite visited a brewery like this before. In fact, this brewery is so rare it's the only one of its kind in the entire state of Texas. So what makes this place so special? Well, we're sending Yellow Texas co-host Ariel to find out. Welcome to Texas Sake Company. This one-of-a-kind brewery is putting a spin on this traditional 2,000-year-old drink. Unique to Texas, this brewery is using innovative flavors while using century-old techniques to ensure every bottle represents its rich Japanese heritage. This brewery is unlike anything Texas has ever seen before because until now, no one's actually taken the leap to brew sake here in the Lone Star State. So does it live up to all the hype? Let's go find out. This is like the first time I think I've ever had a sake that I actually enjoyed. This is really good sake. To get the inside story, we met up with Tim the Odor to learn a little bit more about why sake in Texas. We, we had the, this incredible opportunity to, to uh, join into the craft American sake movement. Um, we've been here about four years. The company was originally founded in 2011, but then we, we took it over from the original founder who had introduced the idea of like making craft 
sake, but we're part of this grand educational experience. This is sake, it's fermented rice. It's steeped in history and tradition, and, and now we're making our own right here in Austin. And now you're gonna take me behind the scenes? Yeah, See absolutely. We got Jeff, we got Jeff somewhere in the back doing like his madman thing, so. Okay, yeah. perfect, well I'm yeah. excited. Next, we met up with Jeff Bell, Toji, AKA the Brewmaster. Sake is made up of four ingredients. We have yeast, water, rice, and koji. Once we learned about the ingredients that make up this traditional Japanese drink, Jeff toured me around the place where I even got to see sake in the making. Oh, that is a lot of sake, y'all. I'm ready to go try some. And try some, I did. I met up with Caitlin Walsh, bar manager and sake connoisseur. So what do we have going on right here? In the flight, you get to try our four main types of sake. Okay. So the first one is going to be junmai. Uh, it's going to be light, crisp, have very melony undertone. Oh, that does yeah. taste a little fruity. I like that. The next one is going to be junmai nigori, kind of a lychee berry, coconut flavor. It's very different though, right? It is very different. Filtering totally changes the flavor profile and everything. So the next one is going to be nama, short for namazake. It's okay. also raw, unpasteurized, straight out of the tank, and probiotic because it's uh, fermenting. So, you know, that, that's why we drink it for the probiotics. For the probiotics. It's healthy. Probiotics. It's good for your body, right? Good for the yeah, health. Good for yeah. health. Oh, well, I like that. That's a little stronger. That's it's yeah, a little stronger. A little stronger. Just a little bit. Uh, the last one is going to be oak junmai. So, this is the same thing as our junmai, but we take a small portion of the batch and we soak it with oak chips for two weeks to try. So, it's, it's, it's got its own Texas flair to it. Yeah. This is really good. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad y'all came up with it. <laughs> Interested in tasting this craft Texas sake for yourself? Type in txsake.com for tasting hours and more. All right, that is all the time we have here on Yellow Texas. Don't forget to follow along through our social media sites. And remember, it's a great state, so get out and explore it. You know what they say, you only live once, Texas. We'll see you next week.